Welcome to the Alex Jones Show on this Sunday, September 13th, 2015. I'm David Knight, your host today. Alex Jones is going to be joining us in the next segment with a breakdown of today's news, and there is a lot of it. We've got an article here from, this is from the Drudge Report, give them a hat tip. The New York Times talking about Justice Breyer, one of the Supreme Court justices who is promoting a new book. He's going to be on the Colbert Late Show tomorrow night on CBS, the new show that uh, Stephen Colbert has uh, taken over from David Letterman. He's going to be pushing that book, talking about that book. Listen to the title of the book, The Court and the World. American law and the new global realities, because, you know, we have to not be so concerned about things that are in America, like the Constitution. We really need to make our decisions based on what the rest of the world is doing. That's essentially the thrust of his book. And as The New York Times points out in their article, he is someone who more than anyone else has voted with the majority this last year. So at 77, Justice Breyer really is the mainstream of thought in the Supreme Court. And what we're seeing, regardless of what you think about these different issues, what we're seeing over and over again is a court that, of course, legislates unashamedly, legislates from the bench. They don't really care what the laws are. They don't care what the Constitution is. They no longer see their job as interpreting the Constitution or the laws that Congress passes in light of the Constitution. No, they're there to reflect what they consider to be the wishes of the people. That's what we saw with the Supreme Court's decisions on marriage. It really wasn't a constitutional determination. They were basically, they, they threw in some issues out of, they threw in the uh, uh, amendment about some of the uh, amendments after the Civil War that were set up to establish equal protection for slaves, to establish the legal rights of former slaves who were now free to give them voting rights and other rights. They threw some of that stuff in. That clearly was not what it was talking about. Look, if you want to talk about Supreme Court decisions, just look at the abortion decision where they said that the right to kill your child is a decision of privacy. Clearly, they're cherry picking and playing with the definitions of privacy. They could care less about your privacy when it comes to dragnet surveillance. They could care less about your privacy at the airport when the government sticks their hands on you and makes demands of you. They don't care one fig about your privacy. This is simply the straws that they use to reflect their personal agenda. And now they're saying that they're doing things that reflect what America wants. But now we're moving to the position where they're unashamedly talking about reflecting global values. And he even uh, references how much of a uh, crisis is created when some Supreme Court justices referred to foreign law as a basis for their decision in the past. It even brought up calls for impeachment, as it should. They took an oath to the Constitution. Not to the French law, not to uh, British law, not to German law, not to any other law, not to the UN's regulations. They took an oath to the Constitution. But of course, we've been seeing this going on for a very long time. What is different about all this is what we continue to see. The mask is coming off. They've tried to pretend that they're operating under the rules that we've had. They try to pretend that they are operating on the Constitution, which gives them their legitimate authority. If they had legitimate authority, they would be operating under it. When they get out from underneath the Constitution, they delegitimize their authority. But now they're doing it openly, just as we saw the mask come off with the NSA. There was an amazing article from James Clapper saying that the U.S. intelligence community it's kind of like Spider-Man. He says, uh, Spider-Man is known for his precognitive spidey senses. Well, many of our customers expect us to be clairvoyant when it comes to things. Interesting that James Clapper would talk about being clairvoyant. We talk about precognition because James Clapper has been from the very beginning intimately tied into geospatial intelligence that looks at your activity that tries to map you out in the human domain analytics. No. The analogy to Spider-Man is with great power comes great responsibility. And if you throw away the Constitution, you've thrown away your responsibility as well as your authority. Stay with us. Alex Jones is going to break down the news when we come back. We'll be right back after this break. I'm your host, Alex Jones. David Knight is coming up to co-host on this live broadcast. YouGov poll, 29% of Americans would support a military coup. That was conducted basically by a West Point professor and others that were concerned. Trump says lightweight Rand Paul doesn't belong in the debate.
Uh, thousands flock to anti-migrant demonstrations in Eastern Europe. Top feminist says put all men in concentration camps. She writes for The Guardian. She's not joking. She says she's not joking. Uh, and end heterosexuality. That's been the plan the whole time. Um, psychopaths are running the world. Former U.S. Marine blows the whistle on Syrian false flag, exposes real agenda. GOP, defund Planned Parenthood, even if it didn't break the law. Well, it did break the law, and we shouldn't be funding it. Continuing, private property expropriated by German state for refugees. That's just some of the headlines up on InfoWars.com. We'll be breaking down. cacophony of fraud. First off, they're not migrants. A migrant would be, say, Bedouin in Saudi Arabia, who by law... an hour down the side of the road with their tractor because it, it's, it's part of the culture, it's part of commerce, it's part of what was before. Okay, it's like Native Americans are allowed on their ancestral lands. out of North Africa, the Middle East, Asia, you name it. The hundreds of thousands per month per country and just demanding everything free is not a migrant. If I show up at your house and knock on the door and say, hi, I'm a migrant and I'd like you to have me move into your bedroom, fair given driver's license voting cards you're now a protected group and it's wrong i can't go to saudi arabia i can't go to syria i can't go to it's working quite nicely okay um it's crazy and then anti-migrant demonstrations and if you pull even recent immigrants that came legally they don't want this either they're not crazy they're running from the destabilization of the Middle East and a lot of people argue well the West destabilized you know with all these wars so we deserve it I was These are the Wahhabists on record that are coming in. They're with nothing, so they are refugees from their attempt to take over. They launched an evil revolution with Saudi Arabian forces and Qatari forces and others with the West backing them. This has all been declassified. Defense intelligence head, the general went public. Deputy head of the CIA went public. They're coming here, which again is the clash of civilizations. Destabilize the Middle East, put their forces in, and then just have them go. Look out our old ally, put in the Wahhabist again, the Muslim Brotherhood. They went around enslaving, blowing up churches, murdering people in mass, killing tens of thousands. I remember watching Anderson Cooper of the Central Intelligence Agency say they're freedom fighters. This is wonderful news, what's happening in um, Cairo. You all saw that. So they've done this, problem, reaction, solution. Now they're flooding the West. Now we're going to get into some other stories here in a moment, but it all ties together to the very same central system of ending the fact that human families and communities are self-sufficient. That's why the family has to be destroyed. That's why foreigners have to be brought in to destabilize things. Uh, that's why free speech, criticizing globalism, has to be banned by authoritarian EU. That's why demonstrations in England against radical Islamic groups calling for murder and bombing are banned and people are arrested because they cannot allow people to ever stand up. The greatest crime in the UK is defending yourself when someone's trying to
falls through your skylight. You get sued, you lose your home. That's real cases because they've got to be worshipped. They're allied with the state. They're part of the destabilization. They're part of making things so bad you just give up. So that's why it's important to have your own garden. That's why it's important to have your own friends and neighbors. That's why it's important to have your own cook stove uh, and not let them ban... Uh serfdom of feudalism with a high-tech upgrade. That's what's happening in 2015. It's called Agenda 21. It's a worldwide treaty. Four years. I'm a big swimmer, a big open water swimmer. I'm not like Olympic or anything, but I can swim three, four, five miles easily. Uh, and I like to swim in creeks. I like to swim in rivers. There's been a lot of rain lately in central Texas. I came out here uh, on Labor Day last weekend to visit some friends and was jumping off their two and a half, almost three story dock into the water and a bunch of water I didn't think shot up my nose. It's like a chipmunk swole up. You probably see it's swollen, the lymph nodes, you name it. Oh, and it's it's really helped. Uh, the last few times uh, I had this happen, it happens again every two three years. Uh, they would say, "Oh, it's bacterial." I'll go to the doctor. They give me antibiotics. It wouldn't go away for a week. Whether it's the colloidal silver or not, this time it's gone down 30, 40 percent in the last couple of days, a lot quicker than the last time with antibiotics. And so I am taking this is. shoot a video about this because here I am getting colloidal silver because I've already used up the bottles I had at home. And I don't tell you to do this. This is what I personally do when I'm getting rid of something. It's great topically as well. It's classic antibiotic. But consult your physician. This is just my personal opinion and view. When I have an infection, I drink a bottle over three, four days. And I told the story. Well, Buckley shooting the video. He remembers it. I hate to bring it up. It'll probably tear up. But it was a year and a half ago that... Uh, two different rounds didn't work. I drank two bottles over a week, so did my dad, and we got better. And I mean, this was the worst infection of my life. And I just want to thank God that I got healed and thank God we have natural things like a silver bullet. And I'm not saying it's the ultimate silver bullet, but it's the closest thing in my life I found to a silver bullet. Uh, we're going to go to break here. I'm going to have David take us out. Take your calls, have some guests on, uh, and more on this Sunday worldwide broadcast. But that's why I'm not here today, and it's important to rest when you have something like this. I may not be in tomorrow, but mess around with. Thank God it's not an amoeba. You know, Lake Travis's people die almost every year with these amoebas when it gets above 90 degrees in the water. It's cooled off now, so it's safer. So I guess there's smaller amoebas that are in me, but not the big ones that eat the brain, get into the sinus. That's how these got into the smaller bacteria. Uh, and I just, they are not, they're not invasive. Uh, so what? I mean, they deserve a home as well. So I salute the amoebas. Uh, sorry, 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 guys. Um, not going to do too well. <laughs> I'll be clear. A, a amoeba is a giant single cell bacteria, the biggest. I have little bitty bacteria. I, I don't have amoebas. But the point is, is that um, it's the same deal. And, and so these are migrants right now that have my head swole up with white blood cells fighting them. It's We've got a lot of news coming up in this broadcast. We've got a Supreme Court justice who's now pushing a book that says that we should take a global view of law. We know they haven't had the Constitution in mind for a long time, and now they're openly talking about how we need to take a globalist view of this. We've got Lindsey Graham saying the conditions are ripe for another 9-11.
There you go. You know, that story has been around so long that it has gotten ripe and it stinks to the high heavens. Anybody that's taken a look at the facts of it, but it may not. It's not always going to come around in the 